Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're taking a look at the top 10 worst game launches of all time. Now, I'm not going to be talking about games that just had a few rough days at launch. These are games that had game-breaking bugs upon launch, ones where developers completely lied about what the game was about, busted servers, DRM issues, lawsuits, and more. Now, whenever we make these lists, there's always a few games that get cut, but some of them are worth mentioning, and I'll put those in the honorable mentions. First off, we have WWE 2K20, which had one of the most laughably bad launches ever. Characters would clip through objects, they glitch out and collide with each other in bizarre ways. There's an endless sea of glitch compilations on YouTube for this game. It's by far one of the most broken games ever released. As for why it launched in this state, the explanation is even crazier. The longtime developer of the franchise, Ukes, dropped the development of the game just months before launch, leaving another 2K-owned studio, Visual Concepts, to finish the game. Needless to say, they were unable to finish the game in time. Our next honorable mention, Duke Nukem Forever, was in development for 15 years. It was the long-awaited proper sequel to the original Duke Nukem 3D, which was a landmark title from 1996 that rubbed shoulders with the likes of Doom, Quake, and Unreal. Duke Nukem Forever went into development in 1997, but was delayed multiple times until the developer, 3D Realms, was sued by their publisher and development was moved to Gearbox Studio. Gearbox finished the game and launched it in 2011 to overwhelmingly negative reviews. Over a decade of anticipation for Duke Nukem Forever couldn't hide the fact that the game looked like it was five years old and ran horribly. All right, moving on to the actual top 10 list, starting off with number 10, we have Half-Life 2. I know what you're probably thinking, wait, wasn't Half-Life 2 a masterpiece? Isn't it one of the most highly regarded games of all time? Well, its launch certainly wasn't. Valve launched their Steam client and storefront alongside Half-Life 2 and also required installing Steam to play the game. It was one of the first times a major developer pushed not only online DRM, but their own game client on players. And naturally, the demand for Half-Life 2 quickly overwhelmed Valve's servers. Signing into Steam frequently broke shortly after the game's launch, meaning gamers around the world just couldn't play. And although many of us view Steam in a very positive light these days, the Steam that launched back in 2004 was buggy, it was a mess, and didn't have anywhere near the same technical features and fluidity that it does nowadays. So pairing that with Half-Life 2 certainly brought clients in, but Valve was not yet ready for them. Game number 9 on the list is Batman Arkham Knight. Rocksteady had been printing money with their Batman franchise of detective brawler games. Arkham Knight was set to be the most ambitious and potentially last title in the franchise. It finally added a drivable Batmobile, a larger Gotham City to explore, updated visuals, and more. Unfortunately, it was also a performance nightmare. Performance issues on PC rendered the game unplayable for many users. At launch on PC, the game was capped at 30 FPS. This could be unlocked with a few tricks, but doing so broke the game's physics engine. It also ran poorly in general, even on top-end PCs for the day. Frame rates were in the teens, along with frequent stutters that made the game just feel unpolished, barely playable, despite its impressive visuals. The day after launch, June 24th, 2015, the game's publisher halted sales of Arkham Knight on PC. And it wasn't until October of 2015 that the game was available again on PC. It relaunched with a significant update and unlocked the frame rate, addressed many of the performance issues, and also bundled all the DLC with the game. Unfortunately, many issues like stuttering and low FPS in some areas are still a problem to this day on modern hardware. Recently, a Reddit user discovered a potential fix for the game's stutters, but it's still a work in progress and should have been handled by the developers to begin with. Number 8 on this list is Dark Souls. Now, you might think that this game launched fine, considering it's a modern masterpiece of gaming, but that's only thanks to a dedicated modder that fixed the game 23 minutes after it officially launched. Dark Souls was originally a console-exclusive title for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. 
and a petition asking the developers from software to make a PC port reached 95,000 signatures. In response, From announced the PC port in April 2012. It eventually launched 11 months after the original console release. However, leading up to the PC version's launch, From Software acknowledged that the port would not be ideal. They said it wouldn't address the game's notorious frame rate issues and would be locked to a resolution of 1024 by 768. Dark Souls was also designed to run at 30 FPS, which meant playing at 60 or above broke certain aspects of the game, such as jumping and dodging attacks. Now, Durante's mod for the game, DS Fix, went live 23 minutes after Dark Souls launched and became an essential fix for the game. It let users set a proper rendering resolution for the game, unlock the frame rate, and also supported swapping textures with community-made assets. And despite the mod becoming basically a necessity to play the game, From Software never built upon the modder's work or fixed the game. It wasn't until they released Dark Souls Remastered in 2018 that the game officially got a proper PC port with a functioning 60 FPS mode and different resolutions. To make things even worse, Dark Souls also had the fine distinction of being a Games for Windows Live title, requiring users to use Microsoft's terrible excuse for online server support. Had it not been for Durante's mod, Dark Souls likely would have been one of the worst PC ports ever made. Number 7 is a classic EA blunder, but one so big that it essentially killed the franchise. SimCity from 2013 was a massively hyped game that had huge departures from the previous titles in the franchise, but it had a disastrous launch that forced developers to disable core features and created a nearly unplayable experience for the first several weeks of the game's launch. SimCity as a franchise had a legacy of being an exceptional game. Every new game was bigger and better than the previous one. Each game added new things to build and manage more complexity and better visuals. SimCity 2013, on the other hand, had a playable area one quarter the size of the previous game and it required an internet connection in order to play. On launch, EA servers were overwhelmed by the demand for the game. This made logging in spotty at best and impossible for most. To mitigate the issues, EA disabled leaderboards, achievements, and many other features. However, the servers remained unstable for quite some time and because the game relied on server-side saving, many saves were corrupted or deleted, leaving players who had been working on their cities for 20 plus hours in a position where they simply had to start over or just stop playing the game. Not only that, but core features of the simulation experience didn't even function properly. The traffic system was so flawed that even if you had a perfectly designed city, a school bus could get stuck at an intersection preventing your citizens from getting educated, and then the education level in your city would drop, making so that high-level tech jobs would become unemployed, which could result in things like a nuclear power plant not having any educated workers to operate it, and then it would melt down, destroying your entire city. All because a school bus glitched out at an intersection. Things got so bad that EA offered players a free game from a small list of popular titles, including Battlefield 3 and Mass Effect 3. Despite continuing to get patches and DLC content, SimCity 2013 is still a shadow of a proper SimCity title. Number 6 on this list is Diablo 3. Many gamers of my generation know exactly what they were doing the night Diablo 3 launched because it certainly wasn't playing Diablo 3 despite their many attempts to do so. Blizzard's failure to predict player counts for the launch of the game was one of the industry's biggest disasters. The infamous error 37 servers are busy message plagued players for weeks. And although our list today talks about many server issues at launch, this was paired with one of the most anticipated games of all time. Server issues aside, Diablo 3 also featured an auction house where players could put in-game items up for sale and buy them at an auctioneer with either in-game currency or actual money. Diablo 3 is a game in which you spent the vast majority of your time grinding for new items. Being able to just buy whatever high-level item you wanted fundamentally undermined the whole point of the game. Instead of spending time actually playing the game to get good items, players could just use the auction house to spec their character with the best loot. The auction house was removed shortly before Diablo 3's first major expansion, Reaper of Souls. The expansion launched alongside a massive update to the game called Loot 2.0 that reworked how loot was rewarded 
awarded to players. And while the game still sold exceptionally well in its first year, it goes without saying that Blizzard's support of the game post-launch is ultimately what made it a long-term success despite its disastrous launch. Number 5 on the list is Watch Dogs. This title is one of the most high-profile launch disasters ever. Before the launch of Watch Dogs, Ubisoft had released several trailers showcasing the game's environments, gameplay, and mechanics. However, each subsequent trailer seemed to show the game's visuals and interactivity going down in terms of quality. The game started to look less and less like its original reveal at E3 2012. On release, the glaring differences like NPC density, visual effects, weather effects, environmental complexity, asset quality, and several other major things weren't anywhere close to what Ubisoft originally showcased. This was even true on PC playing the game on Ultra settings. Really though, the big issue is Ubisoft's original reveal of Watch Dogs showed a city alive with NPC activity and a level of immersion that seemed to rival even Rockstar's Grand Theft Auto. GTA 5 launched in 2013, and by the time Watch Dogs released the following year, it already looked dated and pale in comparison to Rockstar's juggernaut of an open world game. Ubisoft failing to deliver games that look as good as their trailers became a massive issue for the company. Critics and content creators alike routinely slammed Ubisoft for showcasing vertical slices of their games as if they reflected reality. And despite Ubisoft really trying to win that title for false advertising, there's another game on this list that did it even better. Aliens Colonial Marines is our number four pick, and it actually resulted in legal action against the developers. Like with Duke Nukem Forever, Aliens Colonial Marines spent years in development hell. It took six years to make and was given to a third-party developer so that its main developer, Gearbox, could focus on Duke Nukem Forever and Borderlands 2. Now when I say focus on, what I really mean is use the money Sega gave Gearbox to develop Aliens to make Borderlands 2 instead. A trailer of the game debuted at E3 2012. It showed the game set in an alien universe brimming with the franchise's classic horror atmosphere. What ultimately launched in February the following year was a far cry from that trailer to say the least. Visually, the quality of the game's environments, lighting, and interaction animations was dramatically different from the trailer. Instead of looking like an atmospheric horror shooter, Aliens turned out to be an incredibly generic action shooter. But even worse was the AI that controlled the alien enemies. Aliens would frequently wander aimlessly through levels, either totally ignoring the player or attacking in bizarre and unnatural ways. To add insult to injury, in 2017, a modder discovered a typo in the game's config files that broke the enemy AI. Fixing that typo actually makes alien enemies track and attack players correctly. Even with the fix though, it's clear the game just isn't up to par. The aliens are shockingly bland and repetitive enemies, all the levels feel barren and lifeless, and the game's story is a bit of a joke, even compared to some of the Alien sequel movies. Two players brought a class action lawsuit against Gearbox and Sega, claiming the game was falsely advertised. And while Gearbox were eventually dropped from the suit, it became clear through the process that Sega had caught them funneling money to other projects and canceled the game at one point, forcing Gearbox to lay off staff. The ordeal also exposed Gearbox Gearbox's CEO, Randy Pitchford, is a polarizing public figure and the potential source of mismanagement at the company. Since then, Gearbox and Randy Pitchford's reputations have never fully recovered. Number three on the list is Fallout 76. For years, Fallout fans have dreamed of a multiplayer Fallout game. Being able to roam the wasteland with your friends has a certain ring to it that sounded like an ideal fit for the franchise. So people were elated when Bethesda announced Fallout 76, an open world multiplayer Fallout game. That excitement quickly turned to disappointment though. At launch, the game featured numerous and glaring technical issues like poor performance, game-breaking bugs, server issues, cheating, and a lot more. An exploit that let players unlock their frame rate also let them increase their attack movement speed. This was an issue discovered in the game's pre-launch beta, but it wasn't patched until after the game officially launched. On top of that, the game's design was bizarre. It had no NPCs and an aimless endgame with basically nothing meaningful to do. Dropping multiple atom bombs one of the game's heavily advertised features also crashed the server. Really what made Fallout 76's launch so bad was that it combined all the complexities of the multiplayer game with the classic jank Bethesda's game engine is infamous for.
4. Fallout 76 doesn't just look like Fallout 4, it also shared many of the game's outdated technical qualities. So not only did Fallout 76 look outdated, the gameplay felt outdated. Between its outdated design, bad microtransaction systems, and their failure to fix many of the game's problems, the perception of Bethesda as a studio that puts out buggy masterpieces finally fell to reveal a company milking an aging technology and players alike. Now, number two on this list is a game that I think everyone expects to be here given my channel, Battlefield 5. Past Battlefield titles have all had rough launches. Battlefield 3 was poorly balanced and had a bunch of stability issues at launch. Battlefield 4 invented the need for a community test environment just to fix the game. But Battlefield 5 takes the cake for not just the worst launch in the franchise's history, but also the worst reveal. Battlefield 5's reveal trailer is an action-packed mess featuring bionic limbs, players wearing blue face paint, katanas, and an environment that makes you think Think, am I looking at a World War II game? In fact, literally, that was my response and many other people trying to guess what the actual theme or era of Battlefield 5 was after watching the reveal trailer. And once it was confirmed to be a World War II game, people took issue with the fact that women were prominently featured on the front lines of battles that they never fought in. And as a response, EA's creative officer, Patrick Sutherland, told people not to buy the game if they didn't like that. Naturally, this enraged a huge portion of the gaming community and politicized a game that didn't need to be politicized. Upon launch, the game was clearly unfinished, only having received a fraction of development time that previous EA titles were given, and it had bugs in just about every major feature of the game, including progression systems, performance issues, vehicles not functioning correctly, and it wasn't just the severity of these bugs, but the sheer quantity and just how deeply ingrained they were to the game engine has made many of them unfixable still to this day, not only earning Battlefield 5 the title of one of the worst launches in its entire history, but probably making it one of the worst games of the franchise. Now, what could possibly be worse than that? Well, number one on our list goes to No Man's Sky. And unlike many other games on this list, its launch issues were a total surprise. For years leading up to the game's launch, its creator and project lead, Sean Murray, touted the game as a massive online adventure you could go on with friends while exploring an endless procedurally generated universe. It almost sounded like the next evolution of Minecraft and gaming in general, taking the focus of crafting and exploration into stars and space beyond. What ended up launching, however, was essentially a single player experience of revisiting an infinite number of strikingly similar planets with plants and animals that all looked like distant cousins while being forced to endlessly grind tedious tasks and quests that led to a weird conclusion that basically said, now do it all again. The lack of multiplayer felt like a direct betrayal and lie by the developers. Sean Murray had excitedly said you could play with friends deep into the game's press coverage and marketing campaigns. It was a central pillar of the game's supposed value, so when players realized they couldn't actually see each other or interact in any meaningful way with each other, they were understandably upset, to say the least. The most players could do at launch was claim their discovery so that other people could see their username next to it on planets and animals they had found. When it came to the gameplay, it was a mere shadow of what was advertised in the trailer. No epic fleet battles in space, you could merely shoot at a few pirates here and there. The worlds looked far less lush and alive compared to the trailer, and the extreme limitation of in-game activities felt like a complete lie and betrayal of what was advertised. Combining that launch with an extended period of developer silence before anything even changed for the game has earned No Man's Sky a number one on this list. And it should be noted that today the developers have added in many of the initial features that were promised with the game, although it's up to you whether or not that actually makes the game an enjoyable experience. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Let me know what you think of this top 10 list. Is there something else that you think should have been on here? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.